So BKS Angler says that it is just as easy to develop addictions to good things, so things that are good for you, as it is to develop addictions to things that are not good for you. So a classic example of that is people will arrive late. And I started in my career to start to become addicted to arriving early. So just changing it so that it serves you. And so now you just congratulate yourself for coming just ever so slightly early so that you can start to not just decompress physically, but start to let go mentally, start to let go of that ongoing inner voice, that ongoing conversation, and just start to replace all of that with breathing. You're starting to enjoy your breath. <clears throat> starting to enjoy the breath, as we come into our version of a supported back bend. <clears throat> so we can either be over the bolster with the blanket at the top of the head, or lay over our bricks, bring the first one at the second level, and the one underneath the head at the highest level. <clears throat> Finding a place where we can connect with the breath, whatever that means to you, either with the legs extended long or bringing the feet together into the Bhagavatanasana. <coughs> so we haven't officially started the yoga class yet. Hi, Jen. We're just enjoying ourselves. Connecting with the breath, starting to let go of that ongoing conversation that we have with ourselves, that ongoing dialogue, that inner dialogue, and starting to find the breath. <coughs> Legs tight, 
firming the muscles of the legs around the bone and creating length through the bone by reaching through the heels, spreading the toes wide. And we can have the hands placed on top of the bolster. See if you can inhale now and lift through the crease of the armpit chest. So that's that front crease where the arm meets the torso. So allowing the inhale to create that length in the upper chest, in the upper thoracic spine. Reaching through the heels, so we have this natural counter stretch going on inside the body as we lengthen the legs through the heels. And we use the breath to lengthen through the crease of the armpit chest. Relaxing just the backs of the shoulders down away from the ears. So continue that sense of lifting through the front, even through your exhale. Releasing and letting go of the backs of the shoulders. Maintaining that lift through the front, through the belly, through the sternum, through the crease of the armpit chest. Tightening the muscles actively of the legs. Let's create this sense of lifting the legs off the floor. So that requires the muscles of the legs to adhere to the bone. The sit bones are rooting through the earth and we're lengthening through the legs, creating this sense of lifting the legs off the ground. Maintaining that length, let's take the backs of the legs to the floor. So feel the backs of the thighs pressing, growing roots through the earth. See if you can widen where that crease of the leg meets the buttocks from the inner to the outer back thigh. upper chest. Good. Let's take the hands to the elbows and let's reach the elbows up and overhead, widening the outermost forearm away from the center line of the body. So find that armpit and widen from the center of the armpit out to the sides. Widening the outermost shoulder blades away from the center line of the body. The inner shoulder blades draw towards each other and up in towards the spine. See if your legs are still fully active. Feel the muscles working as they tighten around the bone. The kneecaps are lifting. The thighs are lifting, the belly is lifting. Good job, you guys. Let's take the elbows back down. And let's take the bolster and just lift the bolster and take your feet together into the butterfly, into Baddha Konasana. Now there may be a little congestion behind the lower back, so lift your hips and take your tailbone towards your heels, lengthening and releasing the lower back, and then gently place the bolster on top of those inner thighs. See if you can feel a sense of pushing those thighs away from you. Feel a sense of rolling the thighs back. Let's inhale, lift through the crease of the armpit chest. So feel that lift and length through the armpit chest. Hi, girl. How are you? Just good. Just grab a spot. Try to relax your shoulders down. And now see if you can take 
take your lower ribs down towards your pelvis. And also create that sense of taking your pelvis towards your lower ribs. So just unite those two areas in the body with that universal energy. Let's all breathe a little more deeply now. Full body breaths. Drop your shoulders. Lift through the sternum and the sides of the arm and chest. Lift through the belly. Sit bones are gripping the floor. The thighs are rolling back. And we're also creating a double action by rolling those inner thighs forward using the bolster. Pressing the bolster. Rolling those thighs in. So we tuck the sits bones in and under, the thighs roll naturally out, and we create that sense of externally rotating the thighs out. And then we create a second and double action using the bolster, trying to roll the thighs in. So untucking the pelvis is the second and double action. And now add that third journey of awareness by moving from your hip bones along the tops of the thighs, out through the kneecaps. See if you can feel that work, trying to lengthen the thighs out through the kneecaps from the hip bones. This is what will release those knees down. Tuck, 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 scoop your tailbone in and under, feel your sits bones growing roots through the earth, and then create that second action by rolling the thighs away from each other. But we're still lifting through the crease of the armpit chest. So we're lengthening through the side spine from the hip to the underarm. Letting the breath create that space from the inside out. Beautiful breathing, ladies. Nicely done. Keep that breath rolling. Just noticing if the creases, the corners of the mouth are turning up. I bet they are. Because the breath starts to create that sense of bliss as it activates the left prefrontal cortex of the brain. That left side of the brain starts to grow and become full bodied. This is our feel good center. Good job, everybody. So let's move the bolster off to the side. Good. And then let's lift that left knee up and over to the right. Let's come off our blocks using your right elbow and your left hand to press this up. And let's move the blocks. Let's swing around. Now I haven't done this pose in a while, and my dear man, you might want to do this one standing. Oh, you want to come into child's pose, do you? No, I'm just. I like it. Okay. So, inspired. So, the reason that that comes is we were in a deep back bend. So, let's take a break and come into Adho Mukha Mirasana. So, we support the head and let's bring the arms forward. So, the knees are wide, feet together, and just take your arms forward. Oh, hallelujah. Boy. So Adho Mukha Virasana is an amazing pose. And if you can start to use your palms, the elbows are straight, so the arms are straight, and press your palms to the floor so you push your hips down in towards your heels. And then use that next inhale to lift the belly and lift those lower ribs up and over the thighs. So we're continuing that work to lengthen through the front of the body. Let's start to tuck the sit.
sit bones in and under. So sometimes one of the sit bones is overly tight. So tucking one sit bone at a time can work a little better. So tuck your right sit bone. See if you can feel a sense of drawing that right sit bone to that left heel. drop a little closer to the thighs. So we're looking for those micro movements inside the body using the breath, everybody. So let the inhale, lift the arch of chest towards the hands, lifting the lower ribs up and over the belly, make over the thighs. And then use your palms, push your hips down to your heels. And then tuck the left sits bone. See if you can draw that left sits bone down and over to the right. And then lift the belly up and over the thighs again, trying to lengthen through the front of the body, just in micro movements. Very little visible movement from the outside of the body. Full body breath now. Start to breathe as deeply as you can. See if you can feel your side body moving. If you can feel the breath touch the top of the spine. Feel the breath come right up into those cervical vertebrae. Making your exhale just as important as the inhale. So we're going to lift the hips. And let's take Adho Bukhashvasana, so downward dog. So look at your hands, look at your feet, try to draw those outer arms down and in, those outer forearms down to draw the shoulders away from the ears and then in towards each other as you make your elbows straight. Let's tuck the toes in and under, leaning with the sit bones as you lift your hips. Look at your feet and try to have the outer feet so they're parallel to the outside of the mat. First order of the day, let's lift the kneecaps. So if one leg is tighter than the other, it's easier to do one kneecap at a time. So lift the right kneecap up and press the right heel down. Without lifting the right heel, let's lift the left kneecap up and press the left heel down. So don't release the heels away from the floor. This pedaling action is exactly what we want to avoid today. Lift your kneecaps, press your heels down. Very nice. See if you can feel your outer heels working towards the floor. Let's press the palms deeply into the floor as you pull your hips back, lengthening through the sides of the body. So once we get those legs working, let's draw the shoulders as far as we can away from the ears. So the creases of the inner elbows roll up. And then we lock the shoulders down away from the ears by drawing the outer forearms in. Lower ribs to the hips. Tuck those sit bones in and under now. So take your sit bones down to your heels without letting your shoulders lift, without letting your lower ribs release from to working towards the hips. So the lower ribs draw towards the hips. The kneecaps, the tops of the thighs are lifting. The outer hips are drawing in. The outer forearms are drawing in. Lots is going on, right guys? Good job. Let's drop the knees down. Nicely done. And let's take our blanket. Let's bring it underneath the knees. So we can either do this standing or on the knees. It's up to you if you have any type of knee issues. 
come to the wall and stand. Let's take a walk out to the right, then step the left foot out to the left. Lots of padding on the knees, lots of padding. You can double up your knee here, padding. Let's take that left foot out to the left, and let's reach the left arm all the way overhead. Take your hips forward. So we're scooping, we're tucking the pelvis in and under to bring the pelvis forward, pressing through the outer left heel. See if you can lift your left kneecap. Draw that outer left corner of the buttocks, cheek in. Open your left underarm. And then reach your left hand in the opposite direction. So you're pressing your left heel to the floor left arm is reaching in an opposing direction. Lift your belly. Feel those muscles working, adhering to the bones. That's it. Allowing the breath to lead the effort. And slowly lift back up. Reach the right arm up, so lift through the corners of the smiling face, stretch as high as you can. And let's take the right hand over to the left. You get a little dizzy there? Back up. So Perian Gasna is a double back bend and it's a lateral twist. So it looks probably quite a bit easier than it really is. Lift your belly. Together, maybe take that left hand down towards that left foot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lift your belly, lift through the armpit chest. Good job, and slowly lift up.
And then let's fold forward. So if you need a strap, use a strap to take it around your outer feet. Otherwise, just try to grab the outsides of your feet or grab your ankles, whichever you decide is going to work for you. Paschimottanasana is a therapeutic pose. Lift through the crease of the armpit chest. See if you can reach the balls of the feet a little further forward. This is what's going to help to drop the backs of the thighs to the floor. So we're not staying here for long. Let's bring the right hand to the right thigh and just open that right leg out to the side. And let's take the block onto that right thigh. So away from the knee, right up near the crease where the leg meets the uh, torso. And let's externally rotate that right thigh out. So this is the body in the leg and it starts with an external rotation as we look to the right. It's easier to lean and externally rotate that thigh. So once we get that sense of the thigh rolling out, we take the left hand to the right ribs and turn those right ribs to the inner left thigh. And then start to without losing those right ribs. So the right ribs and the belly are still working toward the inner left thigh. The dundas in the leg is working hard here. So the kneecap and the top of the thigh are lifting, the back of the thigh is lifting, pressing down, and that left hand is coming to the outer left foot. So roll that right thigh back. You are right there? And we're trying to reach the ball of the left foot slightly forward to help release the top of that left thigh down into the back of the thigh. And then the back of the thigh presses more actively to the floor. Oh, feel free to walk around, my dear man. Maybe we should do that next. <laughs> Don't give up my beef. <laughs> All right. So try to keep that sense of that lengthening out through the kneecap, let's take the right hand to meet the left. So those right ribs are still turning to the inner left thigh, We're lifting through the crease of the arm and chest, pressing the back of the left thigh down to create that momentum. Up. 
All right, here. So let's take the left leg back, and let's bring the right foot, like so. So maybe we should have a hand print right here. And you can see I'm using my left hand. Let's lift the right arm up, lift the belly, and let's focus on folding forward to start. So just trying to let your breath create that fold from the hip. The inhale lifts through the side, armpit, chest. The back of the left thigh presses to the floor. And we're slowly folding forward with the momentum of the breath. The mind is still at this point. Request to get out. Right? It's, it's not a gentle request. 
<laughs> and then let's take the left hand up and over to the right. So I'm working hard to create that lift in the left elbow. That's a good one. Maybe we should do that one. Right. And then let's bring the right elbow to the inner right thighs and twist a little deeper. Good job. And then slowly lift back up. You feel the release of tension. That's a beautiful thing. And then let's take the strap around. In case you cannot grab your, uh, your hands like me. And then let's lift the left arm up. So lift and lengthen. That's it. And let's fold forward to start. So the first part of the pose is just focusing on releasing the torso down. Using the breath to take those lower ribs to the hips. But the arm and chest is lifting forward. And then let's take the left arm and try and dig it in. And just grab your strap if you are not a binder. So 
in this axle twist, the spine's getting a nice detox. We can allow all of the toxins in the spine to be released using the breath in this axle twist. So the more you breathe, the more you let go of what you no longer need. Feeling that release out through the exhale. The exhale is the body's natural tool of letting go of tension in the body. So see if you can just find a few moments to spend with your exhale, participating in that effort of letting go of releasing what you no longer need. So if your left cheek is on the bolster, just gently lift your head and bring your right cheek to the bolster. Just allowing those cervical vertebrae to reset. And then let's press into the hands, lifting the head and chest. Good. And then swing the knees 180 degrees over to the other side. So it's like a hip hop move. And let's come over to the bolster on the left side and just drag your left hip away. So tuck that left sit bone in and under. Let's bring the forearm to the floor and let's lift the chest and bring your right cheek to the bolster if you can manage. Otherwise, just keep the left cheek on the bolster. So as you inhale, let the hips be heavy and allow the crease of the arm and chest to lift and lengthen through that breath. Letting just the backs of the shoulders release. Allowing the breath to lead the effort in the pose. So the mind is now starting to let go. It's releasing its responsibility to the breath. So if your right cheek is on the bolster, lift your head and bring your left cheek back to the bolster just for a moment. And then press your palms as you lift your head, lift your chest. And let's move the bolster off to the side. And let's come on up here to standing. And this time let's take the ropes for downward dog, so let's cross the ropes and let's bring the right foot through, turning away from the wall, and then let's take the left foot through. Good. And let's all walk away from the wall to keep that resistance. Good job. All right, let's take the hands to the floor and the placement of the feet depends on how open your hamstrings are. So, see if you can get your feet 
a little bit closer together and take your heels a little lower to the ground, making sure that the outer feet are parallel and then let's walk the hands forward. Release your head, release your chest. So we look at the placement of the hands and feet. That observation can go a long way in terms of identifying an imbalance. So just observing to try and find some symmetry between your hands and feet. And let's all press through the heels, everybody, and lift through the chest. Feel the chest reach forward and up towards the hands. See if you can feel your hands pressing, melting into the floor. Let's start to draw the outer forearms in. So the action of pressing through the index and thumb, so the inner palm, as well as lengthening through the fingertips. Outer forearms draw in towards each other as the shoulders draw away from the ears. And then we feel the lower ribs draw towards the hips and the sit bones draw down to the heels. And then we start that whole effort over again by pressing actively through the heels, lifting the chest forward to the hands, Feeling those hands melt a little more deeply into the earth. So the palms are growing roots. They're melting. We can feel that effort in the index and thumb, the inner palms. And the fingers are lengthening. The outer forearms draw in. Lower ribs to the hips. Sits bones down to the heels. So lots is going on. And we can continue to build from there. Building, building one cue at a time without releasing the last cue we were working on. So yoga is about this and that. And then eventually uniting all of those efforts so that they become one in the body. That union is the yoga. Let's walk the hands to the feet, feet to the hands. And as we come up, good job everybody. So let's take our happy ropes. Should we take our happy ropes? And you can either have your hands or your elbows. You decide, see if you can walk your feet forward and start to lean into the ropes. So let's press through the heels and lift through the crease of the armpit chest. Let's take the sits bones down to the heels. Oops. <laughs> so if this is too much, my dear, feel free to bring your, head, your arms and elbows through like this gentleman over here. Right on, but it takes a while. So this, this is definitely where we start to let go of the doership and just allow it to become a happening. Led by the breath. And we're tucking those sits bones and taking those sits bones to the heels as we actively press through the heels, lifting the kneecaps and thighs, feeling the crease of the arm and chest lift. Letting the breath lead the effort. Maybe tighten the muscles of those upper arms around the bone or not. And then let's slowly walk back. And let's take this row, and we're going to take the, uh, the hands to either side of the knot, just about an inch or so outside of the knot, arms are straight. We create this action of pointing the fingertips, 
and breaking the strap without moving the arms. So see if you can create that sense of trying to break the strap by pulling the arms apart without moving them. And then maybe walk a little bit further forward, lower ribs to the hips, sits bones to the heels. So break the rope by trying to actively pull the rope apart Tightening the upper forearms so the biceps and triceps are adhering to the bone. Maybe coming a little further forward. Good. And then let's take the right hand and let's walk out to a 90 degree angle, dropping the shoulder down, arm is straight, and let's turn to the left. So again, feel that sense of tucking the pelvis, shoulder drops down away from the ears, the upper forearm tightens around the bone. Breathe deeply, everybody. Drop your shoulder down away from the ears. And smile. And then let's slowly turn and let's take the left hand to the rope, excuse me, and have a 90 degree angle, dropping the left shoulder down, and then let's turn to the right. So drop the shoulder down away from the ear, lifting through the sides of the body. Slowly release. Let's take the left palm flat between the lower ribs to the hip. Left elbow, left shoulder to the wall. And let's turn away as we take the right hand behind. Try not to release your neck down. So it's hard not to drop the chin. We're looking for a neutral chin. 
a neutral gaze. The left elbow, the left shoulder are connecting to the wall as we take the left elbow to the spine. And then we start to find that sense of drawing the two elbows together and try to tuck your pelvis so that you're working from your heels, sits bones down to those heels, lifting through the crease of the arm and chest. So keep that left palm fully engaged. That's it, nicely done. Elbows together, elbows together. Good job, you guys. And then let's slowly release. That's effective. It is highly effective. Should we take a downward dog? Sure. Let's take a downward dog. So your choice, if you want to go from the ground or you use your ropes. Let's bring the heels to the wall. And let's walk the hands forward. Try to press your heels actively to the wall as you lift your chest to your hands. And let's walk the hands to the feet, feet to the hands. That was much easier. Pardon me? That was much easier. Good, good. So I think we'd like to come into Baddha Kanasana seated with the strap today. All right? So if you are very tight, you can have the wall as support. And I know exact height for me. Now I'm going to demonstrate how we determine that height. So we're looking to support the hips, so elevate the buttocks enough so that when you bring the soles of your feet together, you can feel a sense of the knee being not above the hip, but at least in line, with that, a slight delicate incline. And then we add the strap. So again, be near the wall. This can help a lot for those of you who are uber tight. And you can see how I've got a little lift underneath my heel. So let's take this strap overhead and around the outer feet and behind the strap is underneath the hip line here. Underneath the hip. So we'll, it is heading down towards the crack of the buttocks. And then we tighten the strap, try to keep that belt belt off the skin. And you can see we're ready to roll here. So this is one of those poses that will profoundly affect the rest of your practice. So lots of time in this pose. So there are two actions here. Feel the thighs roll out. Feel that initial external rotation as we tuck the sits bones. Try to tuck 
Tuck your sits bones in and under. Feel that sense of the thighs rolling out. So press through your outer feet. Maybe widen your big toes away from each other and spread those toes if you can manage that action. But the primary work is to press through those heels. So some of you will have this, right? To lift and lengthen. If you want it. Are you happy there? You look happy. Mm -hmm. So that's the benefit of the wall. So lots of time in the pose. Exactly, Jen. That's nicely set up. I wish I could see that. Perfect. So it's not an easy pose, right? And you can see how I want to collapse in the lower back. So the first action is to roll the thighs out and then a double action is to untuck. So create that sense of lengthening from your hip along the top of the thigh out through your kneecaps. Two actions but this lengthening from the hips out through the kneecaps. Feel the thighs getting longer and longer on the tops, the shins are getting shorter, so the shins are contracting as the thigh bones get longer. Very nice. So pressing through those outer feet from the very back outer heel along that outer line of the foot into the baby toe. Spread your toes, lift to the sides of the body, lower ribs to the hips, hips to the lower ribs. Breathing to allow that change to come from that breath, negotiating space through the body. Mm. So this is what I would call this moving in stillness. We can start to feel the effort inside the body. Sometimes the body is already shaking. But we're working, we're present. Adding the cues as the body allows. That's it, lifting through the side body. All right, everybody reach your arms up. So if you cannot grab your straps, but try to lift and lengthen through the sides of the body, press through your heels. Press through your heels, lift and lengthen. Trying to keep that length as you release your arms down. So try not to collapse. Keep that sense of lifting and lengthening. Alright, so whenever we're ready. Unfortunately, it's only an hour, right? So you can move the strap away. And I think it would be a good time to come into a squat. So, to squat, you need to bring the weight into the heels. We as North Americans are not the best squat, but the squatting is a good indicator of the overall health of the pelvis. So squatting is a good practice, and the ticket is to support your heels, so that you can bring the weight into the heels and sit back. If you need lots of height, you use lots of height. So Jen, try to create more weight underneath your heels. So we want to avoid 
enjoy balancing the balls of the feet if you can. Maybe you can even lift your toes for a moment. So that's the ticket. Good job, you guys. You love. That's, a, that's, that's the holy pose. I know. Press your heels, lift through the arm of the chest. So try to sit a little further back. Try to let the weight come back even further. Drop your buttocks down even further. And then lift the belly, lift through the crease of the arm of the chest. So don't you wonder how people squat for hours at a stretch? I can't imagine that being anything other than a little bit of torture. Vietnamese? You see all the bus stops sometimes. It's so cool. I wish I could do it. Yeah. Oh. All right, and then let's come forward. Let's take a child's pose. So just release your knees, feet together, knees wide. Just stretch your arms forward for a moment. And then we'll bring the legs up the wall. Just take an add down with that here on the center. to your right or to your left, and this is make your way up into an easy seated position. It went a little too fast, didn't it? 
So just take a moment and feel the stillness. Feel the stillness you've worked so hard to create. And then let's reach the arms up as we stretch, looking from our sit bones, feeling the line through the sides of the body. Hands to prayer on the exhale. Thank you all for allowing me to guide you. Namaste. 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 And it's going to rain. Great job, everybody. <laughs> it's different. It's different. All right. The deep, deep stretch. Should be cool. Hands are always down here. Mm -hmm.